Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. I got some bad news. I'm sitting here at the Class D amp, and I went to do a little research. A buddy of mine, the one that has a Class A amp that, you know, that I built for him, he loves that amp. He wants to test his Class D. And we got to talking, and we thought, hey, we got buddies and buddies and buddies that might want to buy some of these. And we thought, hey, it's not like we're going to make money, but we could buy, we could build a few of them and have some fun and you know pass them around to our friends and I thought well I'm gonna need some buy some spare parts just in case years down the road somebody blows something up I can fix it for them right okay well let me show you what I found okay so this is a data sheet for the part we like the TDA 8954 it's really cool part because you can get two times 210 watts or as you see down here in the spec, bridge tide load, as in the board that I've been demonstrating, 420 watts. There's two devices on that board. Each channel has a bridge tide load and has all these cool features. Now, someone asked if it has that pop free thing during startup and here, here's that feature right here. Uh, so it's got a lot of cool features, a lot of protection features, over voltage, under voltage, thermal fold back, over temperature, uh, over current, you know, just a lot of, a lot of features and it just seems like a great part. All right. So then, at NXP's website under products, see, here's a home audio and radio, and then I'm under audio amplifiers and it's broken up into these categories and I come down to home audio amplifiers click on that and it shows home audio amplifiers and here's the list of devices now remember NXP was a leader uh, in digital technology CD technology way back when these parts are you know a decade old from the data sheet See 2009 and it's Rev 01, which is interesting. They really did a good job of this part because they didn't really come up with any, any other re revisions that I can see. All right, so back to this sheet. Here's 8954 down here at the bottom. And you can see the description of some of these parts. What I did is I thought, well, I want to see if I can buy some of these parts just to have some on hand. And so here they are. Now this is the package that I have, the HSOP, and then there's the through-hole one, the one up here. So I come to this guy, that's it. Look at that, $3 in 1K quantities, that's a good deal. But look over here, end of life. End of life. And you see this thing right here, lead time, 52 weeks. That's a long lead time. Then I come down here further, discontinued and replacement parts. Here it is. And look, they discontinued in 2020. That's like a year ago. Okay, 8-31-2020. Last time delivery date in November of 2020. Replacement, dash, no replacement. Here's a product change notice. Here's where they came out with the effective date. If we go look at that, it says discontinued product, discontinued type. They just discontinued it. Look at this, replacement. Look at this, affected parts, discontinued type, full withdrawal. You can't get them anymore, not from NXP. See if I just come down here and say more information on this part. You see, shipment against last time buy orders are expected to be completed by the last time delivery date. So, yeah, we're way past that. And then if I come down here and say, well, let's get some of these parts. Oh, shoot, end of life. Same thing, same story. See, here's the through hole part right up here. Yeah, can't get that either. So if I check this box here, order through distributor, I click on this, I click on the distributor there, and then look, look at all these distributors they have, DigiKey, Mauser, those are two common ones that I like to use. I usually prefer Mauser, honestly, and then I go DigiKey if I 
if I kind of have to. And look at this, zero inventory, none. What a bummer. I went to Mauser just to see, check for sure, and sure enough, obsolete, no stock. Sometimes you just kind of wonder if they have a minimum stock and they're not advertising it or whatever because they're below a certain number, but no, zero. So then I go to DigiKey. Look at that, obsolete, can't get them. All right, so normally as an engineer, I'll tell you something what we do is we look at the parts we're gonna design in a system and we even talk to vendors if it's an important system and if it's gonna be around in that. And, but at the very least, you, you go to their web page and you look up the part and you look at the availability. Uh, sometimes even Mauser or DigiKey will show, hey, this is end of life, not recommended for new designs. And, and they might have a part that they list as a replacement. Hopefully it's form fit function, meaning it's, it's the same size. It's gonna fit on the board, first of all, and then it's the same size. So if, when you fit it on the board, maybe you've designed the board so it mounts right up against a heat sink. Well, you don't want, maybe there's gonna be some interference if, if that doesn't fit. So form fit has to work. Function, it has to function at least as well as original part, right? It could be better, but let's say the, the original part operated with an input voltage range of maybe pretty wide. The new part, they've changed it and it doesn't operate as wide. Well, that's not form fit function. Or if there's an extra pin that you have to tie low or high for some reason, you know, so there's things like that that can drive you nuts. And when you design a project and you get into a design, it could take you a minimum few months design cycle, usually six months, a year, not, you know, that's common. And even two years isn't uncommon. And even longer in some military programs or space programs. And, and here's the thing is once they go into service, you're going to maybe manufacture them for, you know, maybe if it's a set top box for DirecTV, maybe the every year or every couple years they're going to redesign them. You know, but for a lot of products, they might be designed for 10 years, 20 years, military products, 20 years, 50 years even. And there's there's no question. Some parts are just going to go end of life. And there's, gonna, there's engineers that that's their job is to go find parts and figure out how to solve those problems. Sometimes you have to re-spin a board, re-lay out the board, they call it you know, redesign the board to fit new parts or even an entirely new circuit. That's a real bummer. Now, parts like this are integrated where everything is being done in, inside the chip. It's not a discrete part with transistors and op amps and all that kind of stuff. It's everything's done in a chip. So you're really screwed if you can't find a form fit function. You have to do a new board or you have to do what they call a daughter board that you dead bug or you make so that it fits onto the original board somehow that's not ideal especially if you have to get the heat out the thermal systems probably not going to allow you to do that so yeah so you have to uh, talk to the vendors often and make sure that they don't know of that part going end of life that they're happy with it if you've seen it and it's been around like this part for 10 years you might worry about that if it's a part that just came out then you're probably okay. But yeah, so yeah. Well, so here's the thing, is when a vendor decides to go end of life, they usually send out notices and they say, hey, you're using our part. We just wanna let you know that we're gonna stop making it. Last purchase date is February of this year. You know, they give you, usually they try to give you somewhere to, like a year so you can redesign it or make, you know, come up with some system. They don't want to screw people over like that. So usually they give you a year, which like this part, they came out and gave you a year notice. Well, the last shipment date was the end of last year. And so now the next thing is distribution. Mauser, DigiKey, people that have bought a bunch of them, you know, they buy them and they try not to buy more than they're going to sell in that year or even that quarter. But sometimes they do. And especially if vendors stop using them because they went end of life, Mauser Digikey might be stuck with some stock. But 
they know they're going to sell them usually, you know, to other people. There's lots of little companies using them. So you can go look at those and see how many quantities they have and try to snatch up as much as you can. And that, that becomes a frenzy and the prices go up. And that's what we kind of see here. So, yeah, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's a here's another great place to look for parts because it looks all over the place. Octopart, octopart, or however you pronounce that. Anyway, you come down here and look at this. Here's these distributors right here. Stock zero, but these guys, Netroflash, who are they? They must have bought some and they still have some left, and. Here's these guys, they have some. Now they're not advertising prices, so, you know, it's kind of questionable. I guess I've never bought from those guys, so I don't know what their deal is, but, you know, the fact that I just can't click on an order. Yeah, you go to Netro Flash and you get this page. So I don't know if they really have them. I don't really know what the deal is, but uh, yeah, I don't know about these guys. They want a bunch of information just to show you if they have them or if you can buy them. And if I click on this guy, okay. So yeah, this looks questionable. I don't know if I want to go there. All right, so then I come down here and again, these people don't show any quantity. Look, these guys show that they have almost 5,000. And look at the price. Remember before they're like $3 and something cents, they've gone up almost four times in quantities of 1,000. Look at that. So, okay, what if I come over and click on this part? Let's see what happens. Okay, this is looking promising. So yeah, look at this, $17, you have to buy three of them. And so you have to buy, you know, $51, 5150 for three parts. Okay, so now that they're not being made, whoever has some, they, they seem to be jacking up the price. Okay, if I, then I come down here and there's another source. These guys say they have 17,000. So let's check them out, RX Electronics. Okay, it's another one of these where you have to get a quote. Like, you're wondering, do they really have them? How come I just can't, you know, buy them? So, yeah, I'm not really sure about these companies. Maybe they're not set up to sell small quantities. Okay, so now I can come to eBay and I can get them for $10.50. And I don't have to buy a bunch of them. Now this is two pieces at 1050, so they're really like five, you know, less than five dollars piece. But you have to pay three dollars shipping for me here in the state, so I'd be paying, you know, say thirteen, say fourteen dollars. So I'm getting them for seven dollars piece. That's not too bad. Okay, I'll, I'll use a link down below, uh, and I'll and I'll do a little more searching. But I'll put an eBay link, and appreciate if you use that link. That helps me out. It's a free way to help the channel. So. Yeah, they come from China, but, you know, 13 bucks for two parts. I imagine if you're in some other country, you're not going to pay much more. So, uh, thanks, guys. All right. So, now I have a source where you can get them, right? And appreciate using the link. Uh, it looks like the eBay source might be the best place to get them right now. It uh, looks like the price has gone up on them, of course, and who knows what the quantities are going to be left like. So I want to, I want to have a few around just because I have some of these amps, and I might want to buy build a few boards still. So I might just, you know, grab some parts, stockpile them away, and audio guys do that all the time. Some of those um, guys, like if you've watched Nelson Pass, uh, the guy's done a lot of great designs. I was watching a video of his one time and he is showing one of his warehouses or his where he's storing all these transistors, these FETs and these some of these FETs are FETs you've never seen before. But he just buys them by, you know, not the truckload, but he buys a bunch of them 
and you know because they don't when you're selling really high-end amplifiers you're not selling 10,000 a month that kind of thing so but you want to have so anyway he's got stock and he's got replacements and stuff like that so people they're in audio that's not uncommon and in a lot of industries people when they see end of life instead of redesigning the board now they think like well maybe if I just buy a thousand five thousand parts it'll last me until we decide we don't want that product anymore we're going to redesign it anyway so a lot of times people do these end-of-life purchases and they just buy a bunch but right now you can get them on eBay okay so I hope this helped you in case you're like me and thinking about making projects with one of these if you are it's probably still okay there's probably there's enough of these boards around if you're thinking about going into some manufacturing line and doing a small product run uh, I don't know if there's that many parts and if you don't mind spending the money on the parts and you can find them well this is your chance man because you know who knows how long you can get these parts so all right guys so I want to give two thumbs up to the patrons for all the support really appreciate that and I want to thank everybody for watching the videos supporting the channel and all that kind of stuff I hope this helped uh, if you're like me and you're thinking about making a product like this for your bunch of friends and that, then it's all that more, much more important to get a few spare parts and just know that a couple of years from now you probably won't be able to get them. So, I mean, who knows? But, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you guys know sources or, you know, huge quantities of these things anywhere or better prices, let, let us know down in the comments below, okay? Uh... Hope this was useful and appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.